talk about proportions, which is in section 5.5 of your BJU pre-algebra textbook. So a proportion is just comparing two ratios. So remember in 5.4 we said that a ratio compares two numbers and it's often written as a fraction. So if you have two fractions that are equal to each other, that's a statement of equality, then you have what's called a proportion. So a proportion kind of looks like this. 6 to 8 is equal to 9 to 12. So when you have two ratios that equal to each other, um, you have a couple of properties that are true. Um, so before we begin to talk about those properties, I need to explain that the, the order of these numbers are very important. So remember, we read left to right. So our first number is going to be 6, and then the second number is the denominator of that first ratio. Our third number is going to be the numerator of our second ratio, and then our fourth number is the denominator of that second ratio. So the, the order of these numbers are very important when you're talking about the properties. So the first and fourth numbers, those are called the extremes. And if you think about it, it's the first number and the last number. So that's going to be extreme. Um, it's either first or last. And then the second and third numbers, those are in the middle. And we call those the means, the middle. So our property of proportion says that the product, or when you multiply the extremes, it's going to give you the same number as when you multiply the means. So if you multiply the first and the fourth number, it's going to be equal to the second and the third number. So um, you might have heard this as cross multiply, cross multiplying. So if you cross multiply, then you get um, an equality statement, so two numbers that are equal. So we can rewrite proportions, like we can uh, rearrange the numbers in a proportion. Um, the first way we can do it is by inversion, which is taking the reciprocal of both numbers. So you can flip those numbers and you get um, if we had 6 over 8 equals 9 over 12, if we inverted both of them, we would get 8 over 6 equals 12 over 9. So notice that even though I switched it, I'm still multiplying the two numbers together. So originally I was multiplying 6 and 12 and 8 and 9. I'm still multiplying 6 and 12 and 8 and 9. So since I'm still multiplying the same numbers, I still get um, an equal proportion. Another way to um, rewrite a proportion is called alternation of terms. So you can alternate um, the second and third. And when you alternate the second and third, um, you end up with this proportion. And so notice again, I'm still multiplying the same numbers together. So I'm supposed to multiply in 6 and 12 and 8 and 9, and that's still true. I'm still multiplying 6 and 12 and 8 and 9. Um, so here's another example when you're alternating terms. So for this one, we end up with um, 6 and 12 and 8 and 9 still. So all I did was um, alternate those two. Um, and it still works. And, and the reason why is because I'm still multiplying A and D together and B and C together. So let's do an, an example using proportions. So let's say we have 3 over 5 equals 12 over 20. And we want to write a proportion by inversion um, and a proportion by alternation of terms. So if we invert it, we just take the reciprocal. So we end up with 5 over 3 equals 20 over 12. And if we alternate the terms, um, we just need to alternate the second and third term. And we get 3 over 12 equals 5 over 20. So this one, we're actually going to use the property of proportions. So we're going to cross multiply and solve for n. So if we multiply the extremes, we get 6n. And then if we multiply the means, we get 15 times 8. So we get 6n equals 15 times 8. So 15 times 8 is 120. And then if we solve for n, we divide both sides by 6. And then we find out that n is equal to 20. So let's try this proportion. Um, so again, multiplying the means and then multiplying the extremes. So when we multiply the extremes, that's 32 uh, times 27. And we multiply the means, we get 108 times x. 
So 32 times 27 is 864. We divide both sides by 108, and then we get x is equal to 8. So let's try this one. So cross multiply. So we end up with um, 8 is equal to 7x. We divide both sides by 7, and we get approximately 1.14. Another one, so this one would be 50x equals 8 times 9, which is 72. Divide both sides by 50, and we get approximately 1.44. All right, so um, the property of proportion is useful in word problems. Let's say we have a bus, and on that bus we have adults and students, and the ratio of adults to students is 2 to 7. So for every two adults, we have seven students. If there are eight adults, then how many students are on the bus? So our, our ratio is 2 to 7, so 2 adults for every 7 students. So this is our ratio. In actuality, we have 8 adults for every, we don't know how many students we want to find out. So if we set those equal to each other, now we can solve our proportion. So we get 2n equals 56 which means that n is equal to 28. So there are 28 students if there are 8 adults. So another example, let's say we can paint 200 feet of fence in 3 hours. Um, how many feet can we paint if we are painting for 5 hours? So again, we set up our ratio. Our original ratio is 200 feet per 3 hours. And then our new ratio is we want to know um, how many feet can we paint in five hours. Um, so we cross multiply, and then we end up with x is equal to 333 feet, approximately. All right, go ahead and try some problems on your own.